Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Let's draw the head and neck of Mira Gaia. When drawing this dinosaur, we should know that the bony plates on its neck would be much larger than seen on the fossils. When it was alive, a layer of keratinous structure wrapped the bony plate's surface. Mira Gaia had relatively complex muscles on its neck. When drawing, we need to understand the general direction of its muscles and sketch them with relatively simple strokes. In addition, there was a large armor structure under the throat of Mira Gaia, that is, the Gula armor. This armor structure was very complicated. We need to learn how to draw it by using a relatively simple drawing technique. Now, let's draw the head and neck of Mira Gaia, starting with the head first. We draw its big mouth, and then the slender top of its head. Like general stegosaurs, its head was probably elongated. Its eyes were small, with thick eye pouches around them. Then, we draw the nostril. It had a small beak. Then, draw the lower jaw. The lower jaw also possessed a beak at the front. The lower jaw can be drawn thicker. Add some shading to the end of the mouth. Here is located its ear. Next, let's draw the muscles on the back of its head. And then use dotted lines to show its long neck. Its back had many bony plates on the dorsal side. Using dotted lines will make it easier to draw the bony plates later. We can make the lower jaw a little smoother. The muscles on the shoulders and neck can be expressed with lighter lines. Then, we draw its bony plates. The bony plates on the neck were arranged from here, very densely, and there would be more than 10 to 11 of them. These bony plates were like pangolin scales, fish scales, or roof tiles, one pressed against the other. At this position, they gradually transitioned to the armor plates on the torso, which might become larger and larger. Draw a slight shadow on the base of each bony plate to make it look like it is wrapped in skin. On the bony plate surface, we can draw very fine textures. Although these textures were actually very dense and run through the entire bony plate, we should not draw them so densely, and only partially show them, or it is easy to mess up. We only need to show them at the edges slightly. The bony plates were one on top of the other. We draw the shadows caused by the overlapping relationship. But, the shadows should not be drawn too big. Just a little will do. On the front bony plates, we don't need to draw. Now, let's move to the gular armor on the lower jaw. This structure seems difficult to draw. In fact, there are specific rules. We can use an L shape to draw rows of lines. These bony plates were like the scales on the belly of a lizard, arranged in neat rows. When drawing, we only need to show each row with many armor plates.
those coming after can be drawn into short lines and then slowly transition to dotted lines and straight lines in the rear. These scales might become weaker and weaker. Then, we use lighter dotted lines to connect these lines slightly to shape them into rows of large scales. Next, dab some black dots on the skin to show larger, raised scales mixed in with the small ones. Finally, we draw the other row of bony plates. We can directly show them in silhouette or shading. Good like this, we finished the head and neck of Miragaya.